You like what you see in the two groups, and if you can maybe offer an explanation as to why we saw what we saw, as far as the groups are concerned. First, it's numbers. Numbers. We gotta we gotta have uh, manageable numbers for practices, so the players have enough reps. And especially with our team, like we need to we need to get going with our stuff with our players, and uh, to do that, you you have to cut down some guys. And there's uh, quite a few guys are in the other group that are gonna play on Saturday. So it's not a question, okay, this guy has a chance and this one doesn't. No, it's because it, there's, uh, for different guys, we feel that uh, we wanted to see them in different settings. Uh, Randall has played two games and we'll play him again, uh, but we wanted him there because what I wanted to see uh, with our group here is a Shap, like for instance, play center and wing. So uh, he's practicing now on wing, uh, but if we put him in the game Saturday, he'll be center. Uh, so, you know, just give you a different reasons of why guys are where they are. And some guys have played with certain guys. McCormick has played with Thompson and, uh, and Pied for a while. And, you know, we're, we're going to use that spot also at some point to uh, give somebody else a chance to, uh, to play with those guys too. So there's a, lot to, uh, there's a lot to look at still. Oh, yeah, big time. Uh, and we'll make uh, decisions on who's playing Saturday. But I think right now for us, we need to get going with our team, regardless of who's going to make it. Uh, the players that are going to 100% be with us, we got to get our stuff in. That's what we did this morning. Today was a lot about the Ozone. Uh, it was power play, penalty kill, which was, we're going to do so much of this year. Uh, Tomorrow is going to be about the defensive side of our game, uh, individually but collectively too. And on Friday, uh, shorter uh, pace, flow, practice with breakouts, transition, uh, zone entries and that, uh, so that we have... Uh, so that we have a flow and energy to our game on, on Saturday. Did you guys can go back to juniors like Brown and Fulton and Madison? When do you want to make a decision on those guys? The, 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 we are going to keep them as long as we think that they can make the team. If, they, if we feel at some point they're better off going back because it's, it's going to be better for their development, then at that point we're going to do it at that moment. So we don't, we're not giving ourselves any date. It's really, it's, it, we feel that uh, they can make the team, they're still here, for sure. A guy like Logan Brown, though, a 19-year-old, is, is, is it too much to ask for him to be ready to play in the NHL at this stage? You never know. You never know. I mean, you get guys making it. I coach Vlasic. He made it at 18 and didn't miss a game in the NHL. So it's, it really depends on the individual and also the circumstances. Sometimes a guy's ready but your lineup's packed already. <laughs> Sometimes you would like the guy to be ready because you're, you know, you've got some, some holes to fill, but he's not ready. So it really, it's over time that we're going to see what, it's not about age, it's, it's, it's the maturity of the mental side of the, uh, the individual, the emotional side, the physical side, and the, his understanding of, uh, of how we play collectively. Can he adjust? Can he feel comfortable in that? Uh, so all the uh, all these uh, aspects of an individual we need to see, and that's over as long a period of time as we're allocated. So, and what do you see from Logan Brown? Or your opinion of? He's got unbelievable vision. Like we're talking high-end, top six NHL vision, poise with the puck, skill, size. All of that is clear. Now. It's, it's the pace of the game, it's uh, how much can you maintain it, um, and, as, and as we see more and more NHLers in the lineups, we're going to see NHL caliber, then you see if a guy's ready or not. And also, you, you, you know, last year was the same with Shabbat, you know, he played, you let him go, um, and eventually you feel it, you know, whoops. Yeah, you know, you see the kid, you know, you see, and then, then you have to be smart at that point. To, so Shabbat, we waited until the last second, and you could see it, just the way they interact with the other guys and how they fit in and how comfortable they feel, you know. When you feel that you're actually pushing somebody into something you would like them to be now, you're making a mistake. And the, and the opposite is also true. Sometimes you get a guy 
that you didn't think was going to be able to, and all of a sudden every day he shows you and then your players are talking about him and say, hey, you know what, I like this guy, great attitude. He, you know, he doesn't, not phased out by anything. Like there's so many information, so much information we get over X amount of time that, that gives us the right portrait. And I think what's important is that we don't force things. They've got to be clear that the individual will benefit from that and the team will benefit from, from the decision. Can you help me with my uh, old man's memory here? But last year, you had to put off working on special teams further into camp because you had so much system stuff to do. Not just in the camp, throughout the season. Yeah, we, we, we didn't, I'd say we didn't even do a third of what I normally do with special teams because there was so much to do five on five. Which that's is, what I'm thinking. You, you're, you're, you're into that earlier than you were last year by a long time. Oh my, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because the five on five stuff, 80% is the same as last year. So, like to now in the ozone, we we added something today. So that's what we did today. But uh, I could see it from the training camp and from our exhibition games that our vets, they 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 reminded really quick of what they were because we we did it and we did it long and so it's in their minds. It's just habits, getting the habits back, and sometimes it's just a little tweak here, uh, just a, a timing. Very often they'll know. But once you get on the ice and you got only fractions of seconds to decide what you're doing, you need to go through the reps. And I think the five-on-five five stuff, for the most part, um, I don't need to spend as much time as last year at all. Not only that, it's the culture part too last year. Like it's the, the big picture now, the guys know what the culture is. Like today I didn't have to scream. I, guys were going hard and they were, they were listening and they were hungry. And so I think we've developed that. and. I still have to keep an eye on it, but I can really trust our vets and our leaders because it's clear they, since the beginning of camp, they're they're right on page with uh, with, uh, and it with the you culture. To get those oh teams my goodness, yes, in heart. yeah, and it allows me to have, do. I've done uh, 50 times more one-on-ones already now uh, compared to last year because I don't need to take care of the big picture as much in terms of the collective side of things. And so, and even with my staff, it's the same. I mean, we had a staff of guys that are really liked. But we never had worked all together. They didn't know what I wanted and how I wanted it. And so they needed to see me talk and do things. Now they know. So I, things are done before I even have to ask. And that's great. And that's what, that's what developing a, a culture and a, and a winning environment is. It's not just, okay, we got good players on the ice. No, it's, it's all these intangibles that really matter. And so it's great for me, I'll be honest with you. Someone like Shabbat, how important is it to have the, the smaller numbers just for him to fully understand the system and what is going to be expected? I think with Shabbat, he was here with us last year long enough to to know what we're doing. And it's for him, it's not systems. He's got that. He's, we have no issues. I don't think he's made one system mistake up to now. So it's really for him, it's a managing individually, um, puck management on the ice in the defensive zone when to jump in the play, when not to jump in the play, how to deal with the faster, bigger, faster is fine for him, but bigger NHL players, uh, tougher, can he handle the, the one-on-ones? Um, and really it's, it's about managing the puck when, when he's in trouble in the defensive zone right now. It's, 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 as a young guy, that's usually always a problem. In his case, because he's got, he's got such great uh, skating abilities, he's got great skill and poise, right now, for him, it's not about that. It really is about being able to, under pressure, not get rid of pucks and, and eat it and, and find somebody. And, uh, you know, the young guys, they, it's normal. They don't manage the game and the puck like pros do. And that's, it's a man's league. And so he's a kid learning to be a man. And we'll see how fast he can do that.